check the MCDU progress page for optimum flight level and recommended max flight level. What is the optimum altitude? Optimum altitude is the altitude where you get the best bug for your fuel. Data required for calculation will be the gross weight, cost index, temperature, and wind. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel, Captain SQ, where we're going to discuss on Airbus systems, emergency procedures, and supplementary techniques on how to fly the plane. A320 Refresher Series Episode 6 Climb, Cruise, Descent this is the 6th episode of this series to refresh your memory on the normal procedures we perform on a daily basis. Do enjoy this series. Disclaimer, always refer to your company manuals. This video is merely a guide. And before we start, do click on the like button, subscribe and press the notification bell for the latest episode updates. Okay, let us dive in. We have just departed from Suvarnabhumi International Airport. Sawadika or Sawadika. What the pilot flying should do is to monitor the performance climb page to show when the aircraft will reach the FCU selected altitude. Of course, he or she can select any other page if necessary. Pilot monitoring should select flight plan page so he can easily modify it according to ATC instructions. Below 10,000 feet AAL, it is recommended that any MCDU inputs are made by the pilot monitoring sterile cockpit concept. When we are cleared to a flight level or at the latest transition altitude, set the barrel ref to standard and cross-check the altimeters including the standby altimeter. Okay, now we are passing 10,000 feet. The speed will accelerate to Econ Managed Climb. Of course, if you made any modifications beforehand, then the plane will follow the speed you set. Maybe the Opti Climb speeds provided by your airline dispatch. The Econ Climb speed is computed by the FMGS. It provides the most economical climb profile. And how does the computer come up with Econ speed? It actually uses the aircraft weight, wind and temperature models, cost index, cruise flight level, and performance factor. Okay, switch off the landing lights. Depending on your airline policy, sometimes you can switch off the landing lights earlier. Pilot monitoring will switch off the seat belts if there is no turbulence. For the EFIS, both pilots can select airports if there are no further constraints in the flight plan. Turns on ND to off if there are no mountains or obstructions nearby. Pilot monitoring will then review the ECAM memo, clear manually tune radio nav aids from the MCDU red nav. Copy the active flight plan or maintain the return flight plan until you reach top of climb. Check the MCDU progress page for optimum flight level and recommended max flight level. What is the optimum altitude? Optimum altitude is the altitude where you get the best bug for your fuel. Data required for calculation will be the gross weight, cost index, temperature, and wind. The displayed recommended max flight level gives the aircraft at least 0.3 G's buffered margin, which is limited to flight level 398. Okay, let us move on to selecting the cruise level. For example, if ATC clears the aircraft to a flight level above the cruise flight level originally entered in the init A page, there is no need to modify the cruise flight level on the progress page. The FNGC will automatically take into account a higher cruise flight level selected at the FCU altitude norm. But, if ATC clears the aircraft to a lower cruise flight level than the one entered in the INI A page, the pilot must insert this lower cruise flight level in the progress page. If not, the aircraft will not enter the cruise phase and the soft altitude mode is unavailable. Can you tell me what is soft altitude mode? Do comment your answer below. Before entering RVSM airspace, check your altimeters. Both primary altimeters should be within 200 feet. 
When the cruise altitude is reached, the auto thrust will operate in speed mark mode. The optimum cruise mark number is automatically targeted. Its value depends on cost index, cruise flight level, temperature deviation from ISA, weight, and wind component. This optimum mark number will vary with any changes as mentioned. At cruise flight level, again, the aircraft is in soft altitude mode. Periodically review the ECAM system pages. Basically look at all the parameters and amber color on the numbers will normally bring your attention to certain abnormalities. Engine page, check the oil pressure and temperature. Bleed, check the parameters. Cabin pressure, look at the parameters. Electrical page, check on the parameters and also the generator loads. Hydraulic page, as you can see, a slight decrease in quantity is normal as fluid contraction during cold soak can be expected. Green system is lower following a landing gear retraction. What is a cold soak? Well, do comment below your answer. Fuel page, fuel quantity, distribution and temperature. A fuel check should be completed at least every 30 minutes. APU, air conditioning, dark temperature compared with the zone temperature and try to avoid large differences for passenger comfort. Door and oxygen page, the wheel page, the flight control page, note for any unusual control surface position, and the TCAS traffic set to below. Let us move on to the flight level. The flight crew should choose a flight level that is close to the optimum as possible. This optimum altitude is displayed on the progress page. As a general rule, if you fly 4,000 feet below your optimum flight level, you will burn extra 5% of fuel. And if below 8,000 feet, you burn 10% extra fuel. Do bear in mind that your contingency fuel allowance is normally 5%. Let us look at the cost index. The cost index is used to account between fuel and time cost. It affects the econ speed or mark and optimum altitude. The CI can be modified by the pilots. Do check with your airline's policy. To sum it up, if you insert CI 0, you will get max range. And if you insert CI 999, it is speedy Gonzalez time. You are flying fast with minimum time. Navigation accuracy check. Check if GPS primary is available. If not, the progress page will display low accuracy. NAV accuracy downgrade appears on the MCDU and there are methods to check the accuracy. The navigation accuracy indications are available on the MCDU progress page. If the accuracy error is 3 nautical miles or less, FM position is reliable. Use managed lateral guidance. If the accuracy error is more than 3 nautical miles, FM position is not reliable. Therefore, use raw data for navigation. Finally, let us move on to the descent preparation. Get the airfield data and weather at destination and alternate. In this case, it will be Chiang Mai Airport. Check landing distance if runway conditions have changed or the aircraft has a failure. Do check out my video on FMGC programming. Check on ECAM cruise page that landing elevation auto is displayed. Select terrain on ND for the pilot monitoring and weather radar displayed for the pilot flying depending on situation. If you have auto brake, use it. Only low and medium available. On long runways, depending on runway occupancy, time limitations, and the expected runway exit, use auto brake low with reverse is recommended. On short or contaminated runways, well, use the medium mode. On very long runways, and if the pilot thinks that braking is not needed as much, then disconnect the auto brake early on. How the FMGS works is that it calculates the top of descent backwards from a position of 1000 feet AGL on the final approach with speed at V approach. 
It takes into account any descent speed and altitude constraints and assumes managed speed is used. The top of descent is displayed on the nav track as a white symbol. What happens when you push for managed descent? If it is an early descent, descent mode would give 1000 feet minute rate of descent until regaining the computer profile. Descent mode operates within the plus minus 20 knots speed range around the managed target speed to maintain the descent path. The progress page displays the vertical deviation from the optimum descent profile. Now what if we pull for open descent? Open descent will take into account only speed constraints and not altitude constraints. At 10,000 feet, the speed would normally have decelerated to 250 knots or any other speed constraint by 10,000 feet. Landing lights on, seat belts on, when cleared to an altitude or at least transition level, select QNH. Select constraint on the EFIS panel and ILS push button on if you need it. The pilot monitoring then reads the approach checklist. And when approaching the airfield, activate the approach as necessary and continue on. And that's it for this episode. Stay tuned for more episodes. Comment, subscribe, and I will see you in the next video.